YouTube, what's going on here? As you guys can see by the th title and the thumbnail today, we're going to be going over how to get into cybersecurity with no prior experience. If you are new here, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Helps us grow the channel and reach more people, right? So appreciate everybody's time today. Let's hop straight into the video. A lot of people ask me for a roadmap, a clear step-by-step -step guide on how to get their first paying job in identity access management, I'm going to give you that checklist. This is based on the path I took personally, starting from help desk and getting promoted into my first six figure I am role. The more of these steps you follow, the better your chances are of breaking into this field and breaking in fast. That's the goal, right? We want to try to get in pretty quickly, right? Uh, step one is get immersed in the industry. And what do I mean by that? First, you need to get in tune with the world of cybersecurity, honestly, first. This doesn't mean you have to become an overnight expert. It just means start listening to some industry podcasts while you're driving or following security leaders on LinkedIn, watching different YouTube videos like how you are now. Start to pick up the language and the jargon, what a breach looks like, what new vulnerabilities may look like. Um, what new vulnerabilities are being discussed. The original video script of this video was mentioned based off a podcast called uh, Darknet Diaries, which I actually just listening to a few because I hadn't listened to them in a while, actually. Um, and they have like a bunch of compelling stories. Uh, Cyberwire is also good. That's good for like more so daily news. These are like great places to start, Cyberwire and Darknet Diaries. The goal is to get comfortable with the industry. So when you get to an interview, you can talk about recent events naturally. It shows you're actually interested in the field. Step two is getting your basic IT and security knowledge. This is a non-negotiable that you must have. You can't secure a house if you don't know how doors and a window work, obviously, right? Same thing. You can't secure a network if you don't know what a network is. This is why I always tell people the help desk is one of the best places to start. It's exactly how I got started. On the help desk, you learn troubleshooting, customer service, active directory, and basic networking. These are all foundational skills for a job in IM. If you're looking for certifications at this stage, the CompTIA Network Plus, which I have, and the Security Plus are a solid foundation. I'd honestly recommend Security Plus now over Network Plus, but uh, I, I digress. Don't just study to pass the test. Really learn the material. Understand what a firewall does, what DNS is, and what authentication really means. Learning Python for some advanced cyber jobs. While that may be true, but for your first role in identity access management, where I am, especially in the areas of like privilege access management, you don't need to be a programmer. Don't let that stop you. Focus on the core IT skills first. You guys, I mention this all the time, and I say this all the time in a lot of my videos. I don't really Really know how to code. <laughs> I know the basics of coding and how it works, but I am not the best coder. You know what I mean? I can do it, of course. Uh, but does that mean I'm good at it? Not really. Step three is where we get specific. And this is the most important part that you guys really much pay attention to and take notes on. The original script suggested getting offensive security certs like for penetration testing, that's a valid path for that, but it's not the I am path that you need to take. My path and the one I guide all my students and clients through is to focus on a high demand I am tool. It got me my first 100K a year role, getting certified in cyber. Companies today are desperate for people who know how to deploy and manage specific tools like CyberArk, SailPoint, or Okta. Getting a vendor certification like one of the CyberArk certs proves that you have the exact skill they're hiring for. It's a direct line to get a job. It makes you a specialist, not a generalist, as I always say. And, the, and specialists are the ones who get the high paying roles, right? Step four, you wanna update your resume and your LinkedIn. You have to update your resume and your LinkedIn profile first before anything. I cannot stress that enough. All the experience you have got from the help desk, you need to rewrite it, right? Don't just say reset user password. Say manage user identities and enforce access control policies using Active Directory. That sounds way better. You want to frame your existing IT experience through the lens of security. Then put that new IM certification right at the top of your resume. Make it the first thing a recruiter sees, right? Because those, those certifications hold a lot of weight. So you want to make sure that's like the first thing that they see. Your LinkedIn profile needs to, to match. Change your headline to show that you're focused on IM and start connecting with IM managers, recruiters, 
uh, because that'll help you stick out and just help you a lot more. And then step five, I would say, is apply strategically. Step five is applying for jobs. If you have that IT foundation and a new IM certification, you can start applying directly for IM analyst or engineer roles. Now, I would definitely say you need to have multiple uh, certifications, anything in the Cyborg suite or Okta suite or anything like that, like I mentioned prior, you definitely need to have those um, for sure. That's super important. I, you got to have multiple. You can't just have one and expect them to just be coming to you and have a job. I suggest at least having two or three certifications. Or you can do what I did and get the internal promotion. I went from help desk to an IM role with the same company. Uh, now that typically sometimes it doesn't happen as often that much, um, but it's still a possibility that you can do if that's something that you were interested in. It's often the fastest path because they already know you and they trust you and they know how you work and what your workload is like now and different things like that. And you already know their environment. So it just kind of gives you that one leg up, especially over somebody else that's just coming in to the to the company brand new. And don't ignore remote roles. All of my roles in this field have been remote. Uh, while there is a lot of hybrid stuff, and we're all seeing that now, there's a lot of hybrid roles. There's a lot of uh, fully on-site roles, but there still is a lot of remote roles um, in this space as well. Working remotely opens up a massive number of opportunities. It's what eventually allows you to do things like contract stacking, which you guys know I talk about and which I do. There's no way you can make 400K and identity access management, right? Without stacking contracts. I cannot stress that enough. I get all the time. There's no way you're making that. It is the way I was making it. I had multiple contracts. I like to say that all the time because everybody, um, it's like, there's no way you're you're making uh, that much in just one job. No, I had four. That's how I was able to make over 400K. I had four. I had five. That's how I was able to make over 500K. Uh, so it's not a lie. It's something very possible that you all can do. This is not rocket science. Um, but I've been able to average over 400K by stack because I usually have at least three or four jobs. Um, also, apply for jobs even if you don't meet 100% of the job requirements. I tell my clients and my people that all the time. It doesn't matter. Even if you only have two things on the bullet points, that's all that matters. Just apply. You never know what can happen. Um because they just like to list stuff on there and then it's not really like accurate or that's not really what they're looking for. A lot of this stuff is probably chat GBT or um, Google Gemini, right? So don't let that deter you or deflect you from being there. Let them be the ones to tell you no. Don't tell yourself no. Step six is prepare for the interview. Step six, you have to prepare for the interview. I can't stress that enough. Being unprepared for the interview will just make you kind of feel like crap. It making me feel like crap. Um, just not being prepared. Uh, so you want to make sure you study the job description um, a little bit is, is what I did. Um, and I usually, before the interview, I try to get like my nerves up, maybe go take a walk, kind of clear my head or something like that. They're going to try to ask you foundational questions from your network plus certification, your security plus studies. And they're going to ask you specific questions about the IM tool you're certified in. So whether you're certified in Okta, CyberArk, or whatever it may be, they're going to ask you questions about it and sometimes scenario-based questions as well. Practice explaining the core concepts out loud. What is privilege access management? What is the principle of least privilege? You need to sound confident, like you've done the work before. You've earned the cert, so you know the stuff. So you just got to kind of go out there and tell them and show them that you know what to do and that you can handle yourself in that type of role. Step seven is find your support system, right? The last step, the original script called this networking. And yeah, that's part of it. But I think of it as kind of finding like your support system, if that makes sense. Looking for a job can be tough. You'll get rejections. Obviously, I get plenty of rejections all the time. Y'all still apply. I still get rejections. It can take time and it's easy to get discouraged. Everybody gets, everybody, people like to pick it up for a month, right, y'all? And then once they see that it's getting a little bit hard or they're not getting called back, they want to quit or try to blame somebody else like myself or somebody else for them not being able to land a job. It's not a get rich quick scheme or something that's going to just be instant, y'all. You have to put in the work. It's that. It's just that simple and that important. You have to want it. You have to put in the work. You need people in your corner who have actually been through it and can keep you on track as well. That's also super, super important. This is the whole reason I created my mentorship program. It's not some course I'm trying to sell you. I don't care about that. I'm making money for my actual jobs. I don't care if anybody buys my mentorship or course or whatever, right? It's a support sy system to answer your specific questions and review your resume and help you land that high paying IM role faster than what you could do on your own. I like to say that all the time. 
And plus, like I said, we help you get the certifications, where to get them, all of that. We help you with the interview prep. We walk you through every single step of the way so you can land that job quicker. So instead of a year, it could take you, our average client, three months, which is a no-brainer. So that's the framework. Get your IT foundation, get a specific IM certification, and frame your experience the right way. The opportunities in identity access management are massive, and this field is accessible to any, anyone willing to put in the work, and it's constantly growing right now as well. You can absolutely do this. Thank you all for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Um, and I greatly appreciate everybody's time today. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.